Welcome to MSG Network, the undisputed leader in New York sports television, featuring New York's traditional favorites, the Knicks, the Rangers, and the Yankees. MSG Network, it's more than just a game. Sienna Saints. And then for the championship, the defending champion, Hofstra Flying Dutchman, take on the 6 and 4 Fordham Rams. Good evening, everybody. Kenny Albert along with Bucky Waters. Two terrific games last night. Both went right down to the wire in the opener. Hofstra looking for their second consecutive holiday festival title. Beat Rutgers by six points and one of the few bright spots, Bucky, for the Scarlet Knights. 19-year-old Dante Jones, who turned 19 yesterday and scored 18 points. Well, it wasn't a surprise. He came in averaging 16, Ken, but he went for 18, and early he kept the Scarlet Knights in it. His offensive rebounding was excellent. He had nine total for the night, three off the offensive board, and here he gets the stick back. Rutgers struggled all night long, but here he gets one for two from three-point line, which kept his average from three right at 50%, a big improvement in his game. The young man had 18 points last night. He had, he had to sustain it all. His teammates just couldn't keep the pace. And in the second game, a run-and-gun affair, two of the top 25 scoring teams in the nation. Fordham, one shy of 100. 99-91 victory over Siena. And for the Saints, only their second loss of the season. Well, I think they had the, their total uh, quantity of timeouts and a few pit stops. These teams really went. Siena, as advertised, came in with a deep green wave. They played like 14 guys, and the bench actually outscored the starters. A very impressive uh, display of talent and depth. The problem, of course, is they couldn't overcome clutch free throw shooting, and of course their turnovers were very expensive. Fordham hung in there right at the end, and Marcus Faison just didn't, just didn't have the kind of night he had to have. Two for ten, he needs to step up. And Coach Jay Wright says he will do it tonight. Only 11 points for Siena's leading scorer. So the Big East meets the MAC Conference. Rutgers and Siena for third place when we return to the Garden. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden, Rutger and Siena. In the consolation game, time now for the Foot Locker starting lineups. Let's head to the public address announcer, Mike Walshevsky. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. Tonight's first game in the final round of the 1999 Kodak ECAC Holiday Festival is between the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers and Siena College. Here are the starting lineups. First for Rutgers. At forward, a 6'5 junior from the Bronx, New York, number 25, Jeff Greer. At forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Fairmont, West Virginia, number 44, Rashad Kent. Center a 6'11 senior from Lithuania, number 50, Alvidas Tenis. And at the guards, a 6'1 freshman from Middletown, New Jersey, number 22, Todd Billet. And at guard, a 6'5 sophomore from Hamilton Square, New Jersey, number 31, Dante Jones. Scarlet Knights are coached by Kevin Bannon. Now for Sienna College. At forward, a 6'8 senior from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, number 40, Jim Cantemesa. At forward, a 6'7 senior from Schenectady, New York, number 42, Corey Osinski. 
At center, a 6'10 senior from Elk Grove, Illinois, number 55, Dave Dieters. And at the guards, a 6'3 junior from Bridgeville, Pennsylvania, number 5, Isaiah Stewart. Let's go now. Let's go, baby. And a 6'5 senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, number 22, Marcus Faison. Seattle is coached by Paul Hewitt. This is the first ever meeting on the basketball court between Rutgers and Siena. And with us once again tonight, our sideline reporter, Michael Kay. Mike. Thanks a lot, Kenny. Coming into yesterday's game, the press in New Jersey was saying that it was a must win in the tournament for Rutgers if they wanted an at-large bid in the NCAA. Well, they lost last night, so that tells you the kind of pressure that's on this team right now. If they can win this game, that means they finish their non-conference schedule before the Big East slate at 8-4. and four. Well, if they wanted to be 10-2 and two optimally, a Rutgers official told me. So if they're 8-4, and four, that means that while they were planning to be 8-8 eight and eight in Big East play, now all of a sudden they have to up that to 10-6. and six. So that's an awful lot of pressure to have on a game at the end of December, especially a consolation game. Now back to Kenny and Bucky. Thanks very much, Michael. Rutgers went to the NIT last year while Siena won the MAC title and advanced to the NCAA tournament where they lost to Arkansas. Bucky, how do you see this game tonight? Well, Mike made a great point there. First of all, 5.30 in a third-place finish coming off of playing the night before really uh, puts to the test the coach's ability to get his team up. Uh, as we look at styles here, I think the fact that the press and run and play 13, 14 people of Siena really is an advantage. They just do their thing, whereas Rutgers had no time to prepare for a whole variety of defensive sets and, and pressure points. So I see that advantage with Depp going to Siena. Siena in the home whites, Rutgers in the road black trimmed with red, and the Scarlet Knights control the opening tap. Todd Billet with Jeff Greer, Rashad Kent, Alvitas Tanis, and Dante Jones for the Scarlet Knights with a record of seven up and four down. They lost to Hofstra by six in the opener last night. The steal by Marcus Faison, who struggled last night. He's the Saints' leading scorer. Traveling is the call against Siena, the Saints' first turnover. Boy, I look for Siena to really hound Jeff Billet. I'm sorry, Todd, but I'm still, uh, I'm still back for the last four years. Todd played 39 minutes last night and uh, was not a great evening for him. Only two for 10, three assists, five turnovers, and he can expect a siege uh, from the very deep Siena Saints. Matched up last night with Hofstra's Craig Speedy Claxton, who had an outstanding game. Bill it from three. It's good, and the foul. Foul called underneath. The basket counts. And Dave Dieters is called for the personal. So Rutgers retains possession. On that first possession, it appeared to me that Rutgers was really trying uh, to create something down inside. Maybe go to Rashad Kent a lot sooner than they did last night. So Billet hits the three. And the Scarlet Knights will throw in from underneath. Billet. Here's Tanise. Dante Jones holding off the Tanise screen. The Saints zone off the out of bounds. It's more of a matchup. Tanise called for steps. Rutgers just doesn't look at home in their half-court offense. Whether it's man or zone, they're a much better team in transition. Head coach Kevin Bannon, in his third year, has faced Siena twice as head coach of Ryder College. Siena and Ryder split those two games back in the early 90s. Faison draws the foul. First personal called on Jeff Greer. I know Paul Hewitt would really like to see Faison get off to a good start. He's the franchise player and just struggled last night. Perhaps it was a 16-day layoff. I don't know, but he didn't get it going. The team effort all the way down to 
13 guys was terrific. Faison had been averaging 22 points per game over the last five prior to last night. He shot only two for 10 and finished with 11. Hits both free throws, pulling Sienna within one. Particularly with a style of play, they're a team of runs. Last night, uh, they committed a number of personal fouls at crucial times in the game, which slowed down the game and took away their advantage and their depth. Tanis had it knocked away, and it hit the shot clock above the basket. Saints back into the front court with Stewart, Cantamesa, Osinski, Dieters, and Faison. Corey Osinski returning to the starting lineup tonight. He missed two games. As Dieters gives Seattle the lead. Osinski missed two games following hernia surgery. Returned last night off the bench. And back in the starting lineup tonight. Sienna very streaky because the score enables him to set up the press. So they go into peaks and valleys. But at their level, their valleys aren't very deep. Rashad Kent able to hit. Rutgers back on top by one. Both coaches looking for a good start here again. Playing at 5.30 and after a tough loss in both those games last night, all four teams really left it out there. If you win, you recharge easily. If you lost one of those heartbreakers, very tough to come back. And Sienna with the late night last night did not shoot here at the Garden this morning. Rutgers did. Sienna did a walkthrough at their hotel. Blocking foul. Called on Greer, and that is number two on Jeff Greer of Rutgers. Shaping up down inside. Dieters with great position. Finally gets it. Nice smooth jump hook. Sienna, which loves that three, but there were seven for 30 last night. They're also showing a desire to create an inside game early. Substitutions, number 15, Mike Berman in the game for Sienna. Three-point attempt by Stewart, no good. Rebounded by Thompson, who just checked in. Osinski on the steal, slams it home. The Rutgers players, the starters, most of them going 35 to 39 minutes. And uh, Paul Hewitt very conscious of that, wanting to put the pressure on and keep it on. Dante Jones hitting from three. He's a 47% three-point shooter. Nice hustle by Joel Salvi, who just checked in for the Scarlet Knights, along with number 24, Mike Thompson, another Siena substitution. The Saints, number 24, Dwayne Archbold checking into the game. Coming up the floor, Billet pushes out to the side, squared up, spot up. Dante Jones greatly improved his three-point shooting this year. Last night, he was one for two, which even improved on that 46%. Billet pulls it back out. Thompson underneath for Kent. The big fella from Fairmont, West Virginia, has some moves in there. Rutgers has to find them. That'll really help that half-court attack if they can establish the inside game. Four-point Rutgers lead. Sienna was there, 91 points last night. Offensive foul called on Osinski. Sienna now the second-highest scoring team in the nation, trailing only Marshall. They pulled ahead of Duke last night. Archbold posting up in there with Billet, really working the little guy over. Billet again pressured. As he crosses the midcourt line, breaks through. Here's Kent. And Rashad Kent is called for traveling. As James Clinton, number 33, checks in for Sienna. You will see a lot of substitutions from Paul Hewitt once again. I spoke to him about that today, uh, Kenny. I said, you know, gee, uh, aren't you concerned at all about, you know, sustaining some, some good drives that you had early? And he said that last night was a little more hectic than usual because he was trying to work Knapp and Osinski back in the lineup off the injured list. So uh, that made it a little more chaotic, but they're not pretty. They want to make it a demolition derby. Jones rejected by Clinton. Archbold throws it back out. Cantamesa from three. He's got it. What do they call him in Albany? Cantamesa. What a great-looking stroke. 
He was three of six last night from three. Sienna within one. 10 9, Rutgers lead. Salvi had some trouble with it underneath. And the Scarlet Knights turn it over for the fifth time in the first four minutes, 43 seconds. They lead by one. Early first half, third place game at Madison Square Garden. Rutgers leading Sienna by one. Rutgers running. Salvi to Dante Jones, up and under, return to sender. Clinton just into the game, making his presence fell on the decent defensive end. The Saints love that three. Kanta Missa was three for six last night, and he's red hot early. Boy, that puts a lot of pressure on your defense when they spot up on that three-point line. They get the ball up there quickly, and they can stick it. Don't look for another seven for 30 tonight from the Saints. They are shooting 38% for the season from three-point range. Nice pass underneath. And the Saints back on top. Facing with his first field goal now has four points. Again, the pressure on Billet in the backcourt. Yeah, they're going to... They're going to chase him all over 7th and 8th Avenue. His stamina is uh, going to be checked tonight. If he was coming off of a career game, I'm sure his batter batteries would be uh, much more charged. But last night was uh, not a good night for the little guy. He's tough. Billet handing it off to Jones. Pulls up. Air ball, battle underneath, and Faison comes away with it. You can tell Bucky Faison wants to make up for his performance last night. Yeah, bold, almost, uh, Kenny, almost a brazen attitude tonight. Uh, an angry, chip-on-the-shoulder approach. Seven consecutive points for Siena as they have pulled on top by three. Billet turns it over. He was looking for the cutting Kent. Six minutes in. Here's Archbold, guarded by Billet. Archbold off the front of the rim. Billet chasing down the lead pass. Dante Jones. Lecter's got a break that time. Sienna feeling very confident about their ability to go to that offensive board. They're rebounding from deep, which makes them vulnerable to the quick getaway. Lecter's found a hole that time. Sienna leading by one. This is Dale Taylor, number 50, who just checked in for the Saints. Corman backing it on Billet. And Sienna calls timeout. Paul Hewitt wants to talk things over. 13-18 remaining. First half, Kevin Bannon, Scarlet Knights trailing by one. New York Rangers hockey on MSG. The Broadway Blues are out west to take on Jeremy Roenick and the Coyotes. Tonight, only on MSG Network. Every day at McDonald's, you can find even more values at our McFamily Activity Center. Now save $7 on tickets to select performances of A Christmas Carol the Musical, live at the theater at Madison Square Garden. For every ticket purchased with use of coupon, a $1 donation will be made to Ronald McDonald House Charities. Look for savings coupons at McDonald's McFamily Activity Center and save $7 on tickets to A Christmas Carol, only at McDonald's. Hey, New York, the Harlem Globetrotters are coming to Madison Square Garden on Saturday, February 12th at 7.30 p.m. Come out and cheer us on. Don't miss the high-flying slam dunks. It'll be awesome entertainment and positively magical. See you at the game. at Madison Square Garden again hotly contested Sienna pushing the ball up to four Marcus facing with a jitterbug step taking it to the rim playing with an almost brazen attitude attacking Rutgers and this uh, we pointed out a moment ago Sienna playing with a chip on her shoulder sending everybody to the offensive board sets up the breakaway billet to Dante Jones 
Sienna, five of eight from the field. They've been out-rebounded, but Rutgers has turned the ball over six times. Free throws and turnovers. Three on the shot clock. Taylor! Sienna has a bunch of tall guys that can shoot. Here's Thompson, and he was fouled as Taylor got back down the floor. Taylor commits his first. And they keep coming in waves. I mean, it really is impressive, the, the depth of Paul Hewitt's roster in, in talented kids. And he is really working the officials this year. Mike Thompson, who did not play last night, entered the game early here tonight. A transfer from BYU spent the last two years on a Mormon mission. Kevin Bannon very concerned, uh, I think, about uh, fatigue tonight. Uh, we talked today about the, using more players and, and getting them in earlier, which is a wise move. He only played two people last night off the bench. Uh, Salvi, of course, and uh, the second was uh, Luis Flores, who, uh, who really struggled last night after two terrific performances. One, 13 points against Florida, and uh, the other, uh, an outstanding performance in the Palestra against St. Joe. But typical of uh, freshman players, uncertain of what they're going to give you. He didn't have it last night. He committed a couple of early turnovers when he entered the game. Ball rolling towards the sidelines. And it will be Rutgers' possession. Rutgers so far solving the full court pressure much better than the half court pressure. And part of that is the size of the Siena team. And when they trap Billet, who is uh, six foot by stretching it, he has difficulty getting through and over. Billet from three, his second three-point field goal tonight. Nice quick release at his size. He's not going to have a lot of time. He almost shot that ball as he turned, but at the release, the shoulders were square. Good move. Osinski from three on the other end, off the back of the rim, and a foul called against Siena. Seesaw battle here at the Garden. There have been six lead changes so far. I think both coaches are pleased the way uh, these two teams have started. As we said, very difficult coming right back after a disappointing uh, loss. Todd Bellett now using the screen. That's going back to the point I made using a Joel Salvi screen there. Comes around and really leaves the floor a little off center, but as he goes up, squares those shoulders, showing good range, good follow through, and a very quick release. Three quarter trap now. First time the Saints have shown it. Eleven and a half to go. First half. Rutgers leading by one. Billet with the two three point field goals. The Saints now in a matchup. Three quarter press back zone. Constantly changing it up. Jones into traffic. Rebounded by Canta Mesa. Scott Knapp has checked into the game. And the three is good. Prosper Karangwa hitting from long range. He had 14 in that big victory over GW down in Washington, D.C. Of course, that was a long time ago, well, like 16 days ago. Sienna's previous game prior to last night. Jones on the feed from Kent. Nice movement that time by the Scarlet Knights. Sienna pressure not as intense at the half court that time. Rutgers able to run their stuff and establish something inside. Tied at 18, 10 and a half remaining, first half. Osinski, strong move into the paint, put a little too much on it. Rebound pulled down by Jones. Billet takes it all the way and draws the foul. But now the officials will talk about it, and Billet is called for steps. And, and Bannon is taking a lead from the coaching box. <laughs> Here it comes. Todd Billet in traffic. 
Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, but it doesn't matter. I have a plain shirt on. The guys with stripes make those calls. Well, Mike Brophy and Joe Pescatelli got together. And Kevin Bannon, obviously not happy with the call. Rutgers' seventh turnover. Knapp from three. Knapp returning from the knee problems. And the foul is called on Cantamesa this time as he shoved Rashad Kent to the court. As you might imagine, neither of these two teams are, are in a very good mood coming off uh, that loss last night. And uh, both playing a little chippy here. What it's done so far is it's made for a, a much better start than I anticipated. Both games last night went right down to the wire. Oscar beat Rutgers in the opener by 6, 65-59. Fordham upsetting Siena in the nightcap. And a five-second violation, the eighth Rutgers miscue. If there's any real surprise at this point, Rutgers, who likes to go up and down, this game is clearly not in a Siena tempo. I mean, we're under 10 minutes now, and uh, we're playing less than an 80 game, which is uh, not their style. Siena averaging close to 90 points per game. They scored 91 last night. Salvi working the boards underneath, and he was held by Isaiah Stewart. Stewart got some great minutes taking over for Scott Knapp. Now that Knapp has definitely decided that his uh, his uh, tendonitis knees can handle the season, why Paul Hewitt has even more depth, and Isaiah Stewart gained some valuable experience. By playing last night, Knapp cannot redshirt. He wanted to play this year. Good move. He thinks they're going places. Hey, they're coming off a NCAA season. The Saints won 25 games a year ago, 25 and 6, won the MAC championship. Four returning starters this year. Salvi, 63% from the free throw line. Hits both. One of the better free throw shooters in the front court, as we pointed out. Free throws and turnovers has been the bane of Rutgers, and that is not unusual for a team as young as they are. No seniors in the starting lineup for the Scarlet Knights. And the possession arrow facing Sienna's way, so the Saints retain possession as Kareem Wright, six foot nine, listed at 310, down to 286, <laughs> checks in for Rutgers. So we've seen Two players for the Scarlet Knights, Thompson and Wright, who did not enter the game at all last night, both come on here in the first half. Facing strong rebound, Cantamesa. He could not hit. Here comes Billet, leading the three on two for Salvi. Oh, he's rejected by Facing. Oh, what a play. Great pursuit that time by Sienna. off for Dieters. Boy, it's like a demolition derby out there. Bodies everywhere. Where are the New York Rockers? <laughs> and one of them, one of them on the deck was that guy right, who uh, next to the Empire State Building is the biggest thing going here. Technical foul called on Cantabasa of Siena. He also was Charged with his second personal. <laughs> Micah Ogburn of Seattle was called for a tee last night. Kareem Wright only 8 of 15 from the free throw line. Now 8 for 16. And now Billet, who is the best free throw shooter, on the Scarlet Knights at 83% will shoot the technical. Well, as they head into uh, Big East play, Rutgers just really has to, they have to solve that free throw shooting problem. Canna Mesa still, still smoking down there. He was uh, joined with the official on the baseline as well. Here's the play. Salvi down underneath. 
Definitely not pleased with that call. That's the kind of fire you want, though. Wright had it knocked away by Dieters. The two number 55s matched up against one another. Dieters, 6'10", 220. And a technical foul called on Sienna coach Paul Hewitt. He's been asking. Faison got his, has his arm around the coach now. Trying to get the boss calm down. Remember two games ago against GW, there were a number of technical fouls called in that game. Four Sienna Saints fouled out. Similar situation for Sienna. So far tonight, Billet has hit all four technical free throws. Paul Wright is, really likes that kind of game. There were 102 free throws shot in that game at GW. So and Rutgers. Tom Penders, the former Fordham coach, got tossed out. Yes, he did. Right. Miscalculated. He was not as close to the basket as he thought. Stewart out of control. Salvi ahead of the field for Jones. Looked like Jones wanted to, to really drill that ball, and it slipped out of his hand. That would have been embarrassing. 10-2 run for the Scarlet Knights. Facing no good from three. Billet quickly into the front court. Luis Flores in the game for Rutgers. Billet gets down in there deep and gets lost. He really needs to think about pulling up around that free throw line. He can't make plays in there deep. Kareem right to the floor. And he is called. Now Rutgers called timeout. Scarlet Knights able to call timeout as Wright battled on the floor. Rutgers leading by six. And Billet and Jones Bucky have combined for 19 of Rutgers 26 points. We have to look and see. We have to look and see whether those uh, whether those technicals are going to really uh, inspire Sienna right now. The, the venom and the fire coming from the Saints is being converted into baskets. Dante Jones doing a little uh, jive move at the other end. I really thought he was going to stuff that, and it just seemed to ease off his fingertips. He was able to recover and get the score. Right now, that uh, what was a very close game has broken open for a six-point Rutgers lead, and most of it has been charity. Dante Jones, who attended Kevin Bannon's camp down at Ryder <laughs> as a youngster. And it paid off. That's called recruiting early. It looks like his assistant coaches for Sienna are trying to actually screen Paul Hewitt from uh, being able to make direct eye and vocal contact with the officials. That's a, that's a hard job trying to keep the boss from doing what he wants to do. Sienna trailing by eight. And an offensive foul called against Stewart. Sienna has already been charged, Bucky, with 10 team fouls. Rutgers has committed only two. I'm sure that's a point that uh, Coach Paul Hewitt is making over there. He, he hasn't spent much time on the bench. Of course, he, he doesn't expect his players to either. But uh, very definitely uh, up there directing traffic. That ball left a divot in the glass. Dwayne Archbold back in the game for Sienna. Wright will try and fill in that divot with his second attempt off the back of the rim. And a foul called against Rutgers and Paul Hewitt claps his hands. Sarcastically. 7-0-3 remaining first half. Rutgers with their biggest lead. Coming up tonight, following college basketball here on MSG, the Rangers and the Phoenix Coyotes starting at 10. Phoenix tonight, Dallas tomorrow for the Rangers. Rangers and the Coyotes tonight at 10 on MSG.
A pensive Paul Hewitt trying to figure out how to stop an 8-0 Scarlet Knight run. The thing with Rutgers is they can play at a very high level, both for games and spurts. But then they hit valleys, and when they hit those valleys, the valleys are much too low. One turnover turns to two, turns to three. The heads go down. Again, characteristics of a young team. Osinski off the mark from three. The 8-0 run started with the technical free throws. Kent ahead of the field, and he was fouled. Hard foul committed by Dieters, his second. Boy, with Wright and Kent, the Scarlet Knights can come at you with some beefcakes. Unfortunately, they draw traffic, they draw a crowd, they draw fouls, and they don't convert. But we have to, we, yeah, we have to caution a little bit. Rashad Kent went seven for eight last night from the foul line. What a, a great happening. Scarlet Knights really pushing the ball up the floor, and they're much better in transition when Billet doesn't dribble it too much and take it too deep. Excellent. Deep pass that time, right on the money. That seven for eight raised Kent's free throw percentage all the way up to 53 <laughs> percent. Well, it was a, it was a renaissance night for him at the line. He was at 47 percent, and now back to his previous four. Well, when in doubt, go long. Michael Berman back in the game for Siena, replacing Dave Dieters, who committed the foul. Looked like what we saw last night. And Rutgers run is now 9-0. Sienna has missed seven of their last eight field goal attempts. Six twenty remaining first half. Rutgers by nine. Berman underneath. Osinski could not control the pass. Billet looking for open space, finds Kent underneath. Well done. Billet kept the dribble alive, kind of went east-west that time. Siena really thought they were back and safe. Billet threaded the needle. Seven points for Kent. Rutgers 11 in a row, but Clinton puts an end to the run. Billet takes it to the hoop. No good. Rebounded by Osinski. Again, the little guy takes it down in there deep. And not much happens. Nice move by Dwayne Archbold out of Paul Wilson High School in Brooklyn. And Rutgers calls timeout as Sienna cuts the Scarlet Knights lead from 11 down to 7. Kevin Bannon addressing... Uh, Here's that transition here. Good move to the hoop. That time, Sienna, it's press. Not really set up. A much bigger Sienna team on the floor right now, driving the ball to the hoop. Here's Billet, taking the ball east-west around. Nice baseline feed. The double wide, Rashad Kent with good position in there. And Todd Billet under control that time kept the probe alive but I still would like to see him in transition not go down inside the free throw line he just gets covered up he can't find the passing lanes his little pull-up jumper is good enough to draw the defense to him so far stamina holding up four of the five Rutgers starters last night played 36 minutes or more Rutgers leading by seven with Salvi, Greer, Billet, Jones, and Kent. Rutgers bench last night gave six points and four rebounds and four turnovers. That was the net yield. Siena, on the other hand, had 46 points, 24 rebounds, and 10 free throws from its bench. That's, excuse me, that's why Kevin Bannon has gone to his bench a lot sooner tonight. He's going to need more bodies. Lucky that was the third turnover committed by Jones. Ninth at all. Committed by the Scarlet Knights. Now the Saints turn it over. Here's Jones. 
And he was fouled by Berman. Dante Jones is a thing of beauty going for that hoop. Super quick, very athletic. I think that ball came off of, of uh, Rashad Kent's leg, like almost uh, almost like a backboard. It just bolted out there. Rutgers very assertive, very alert, making the most of long rebounds and loose balls. Siena has attempted only two free throws. Rutgers 14. Kevin Bannon again having a word with Todd Billett. It's like coaching your quarterback, and he's a rookie. His brother Jeff, as we talked about last night, spent the last four years in the Scarlet Knights backcourt, now an assistant coach at Monmouth. It appears to be an eight-year reign of Billets controlling that ball in the backcourt. This is the 125th consecutive game with a Billet starting in the backcourt for Rutgers. And the holding foul is called as Greer and Billet came over on the double team, and it's against Billet. His first. Boy, Rutgers had a terrific trap set up there, and uh, Kevin Bannon just really upset. Everything was right, forcing that player in the trap to make a, a difficult pass out, and Rutgers let him off the hook by reaching in. Four and a half remaining, first half. Rutgers leading by nine in the opener. Hofstra will take on Fordham for the championship. Kent with the lead pass for Dante Jones, and this time he slams it home. Sienna continues to get down in deep and attack the board without any defensive responsibility, not respecting Rutgers' ability to make the transition play, and the Scarlet Knights are running it right down their throat. 13 points for Jones, another turnover, make it 15. And Sienna, the team of streaks, is trying to stop one. Hewitt's club trailing Rutgers now by 13 points, a 17-4 Rutgers spurt. One of the problems when Siena goes in these droughts, they don't get a chance to set up their fresh. Salvi coming from the weak side, sacrificing his body and creating yet another numbers game for Rutgers at the other end. And the Scarlet Knights, look at that, off the knees, off the elbows, off the hips. Siena trying to make dribble penetration, and all they're finding is Rutgers' arms and legs, deflections and loose balls. In this game, now Siena with 24 points and just four minutes to go in the half, well under the speed limit for the Saints. They average 89.6 second in the nation. They were third in the nation last year. Dante Jones with the game's last six points. All on fast breaks. Faison throws it back out. Canta Mesa from three. Well, he's out of the doghouse, cooled off back in, but that shooting stroke is still hot. His second three-point field goal. Again, Billet pressured as he brings it across. After the press, the Saints back in a point zone. Kent guarded by Kent to Mason. Down low for the scoop attempt by Thompson. Selby on the follow. Did not get the roll. And the foul called against Rutgers. Inside game much better tonight for Rutgers. They just couldn't get that one to go down. But, boy, you got to admire that guy. Joel Selby comes to play every minute. Called for his first, Rutgers by 10. Madison Square Garden, day two of the 48th Kodak ECHC Holiday Festival. Kevin Bannon and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights losing to Hofstra last night by six. And tonight they lead Siena as they play their final non-conference game before Big East action begins next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, Rutgers will travel to Syracuse. Kevin Bannon not settled on the backup yet for Todd Billett. Billett has gone all the way so far in this half. Played 39 minutes last night. Salvi. Underneath for Thompson. 
And Mike Thompson will head to the free throw line. Now committed by Dale Taylor, his second personal foul. The two choices uh, for Kevin Bannon to give Billet some rest are Renardo Brown, a junior college guard from Michigan, and Luis Flores, who we saw briefly last night uh, a struggle, had a couple of quick turnovers, got yanked, and uh, really uh, uh, was not a positive factor. But he has played well. He, he led, uh, led the Rutgers against Florida with 13 points in a, in a very much a similar game. The Siena scheme of defenses and uh, pressure is very similar to the University of Florida. And he also played huge in the Palestra against St. Joe's. So uh, he is a freshman, and uh, you just have to mature with them. And sometimes it's painful. Offensive foul called underneath against Rashad Kent. Following the two free throw attempts, Thompson missing both. Rutgers with a 10 point lead, and almost all of it in transition. Billet and Dante Jones combining for 25 points. Only two fewer than the entire Siena team. Joel Salvi called for the personal, his second. A lot of playing time today for Salvi. Alvitas Tanis started the game, as was the case last night, but Salvi has gone most of the way. Well, in this kind of a full court game, Salvi is a runner and an athlete. Uh, gives you a little more mobility. This is not really a big man's game. Siena, in the tempo they attempt to set with full court pressure, uh, really it takes an exceptional big man to be comfortable in that scenario. Cantamesa, 83% free throw shooter. He was only one for four last night. Hits on the first. Coming up. At the half, a preview of our championship matchup between Hofstra and Fordham. And we'll throw it back to Bill Daughtry at the MSG Sports Desk. That's all coming up after the next two minutes, 24 seconds of Rutgers and Siena. Rutgers by eight. Their biggest lead was 13. Siena has scored the last five points. Billet has two threes. This time off the back of the rim. Rebounded by Knapp. And his pass sailed away from Canta Mesa. The ball just a little behind the big guy. It's probably catchable. Canta Mesa is not uh, Barishnikov by any stretch of the imagination. But what a great spot up shooter. Billet looks to break through. Here's Jones. The fadeaway. Fifth assist, Bucky, for Todd Billet. Taylor, guarded by Wright, throws it cross court for Knapp. His three point attempt off the rim. Mike Thompson takes it all the way. It's good, and the foul. Again, the long rebound. It was four to one in numbers with Rutgers. Sienna simply has not gotten it that uh, they need coverage in that backcourt. When there's guard penetration from the top, nobody's rotating back. Coming into the tournament, Sienna was the hot team among the four. Seven and one, six consecutive victories since the loss to Notre Dame. Well, again, we point out that 16-day uh, layoff may have been a factor. Probably was. They took finals during that stretch and returned to the court last night against Fordham. A minute 15 remaining, first half. Rutgers back up by 13. Archbold does not get the roll. And the foul called on Thompson of Rutgers. His first. Rutgers attempting to be very, very physical inside. Everybody, anytime you cut through that lane tonight, you're getting labeled. Kevin Bannon obviously preaching, uh, and they are a physical team in the half court. Make them pay. 
Remember, Hofstra was concerned about Rutgers' physicalness, as was the case in their NIT matchup against the Scarlet Knights last March. Of course, they had to play without uh, Speedy Claxton. Hofstra out for revenge last night. And they turned the tables on Rutgers. Thanks to the tremendous performance down the stretch by the combination of Speedy Claxton and Norman Richardson. Well, if those two guys pull out one again in the second game tonight, they're going to have to call this the Hofstra Invitational. <laughs> Corey Osinski goes hard head first into the Rutgers bench. Well, I think he had a beat on the uh, on the Scarlet Knight uh, mascot. Had him right in his sights. Didn't quite get that deep into the crowd. Wright keeps it alive for the Scarlet Knights. Salvi. Three on one for Sienna. Archbold pulls up and hits. Boy, that was a four point turnaround. Rutgers was all over that rim at the other end, only to have Sienna come back and score at the other end. 40 seconds remaining in the half. Hey, Paul Hewitt, not very happy, wanted a, a three-second call. He hadn't been happy the whole first half, and he's down nine. Billet. Salvi battling for the rebound with Karangwa. And the foul called on Joel Salvi, his second. The high-scoring Saints really sputtering. Give credit to that Rutgers defense. What has been the surprise is the ease with which Rutgers has been able to establish its offense in transition. Prosper Karangwa to the free throw line. Freshman out of Montreal. He was the Quebec player of the year a season ago. This is the free throw. Salvi controls the rebound. The shot clock is turned off. The final 10 seconds of the first half. Jones off balance. Clinton to the floor. Five seconds. Here's Cantamesa from long range. And that does it for the first half of play. From Madison Square Garden, a nine-point Rutgers lead. I'm very surprised. Rutgers came out tough was able to solve the Siena pressure, which is the key to everything that uh, comes good from Albany. And uh, this this first half, both the tempo, the texture, a huge surprise. Kevin Bennett has to feel very good about this nine-point pad. Dante Jones leading the way with 17. Todd Billett chipped in with 10 points. And for Siena, their season low four points. In the first half, they score only 33, and Rutgers coach Kevin Bannon is with Michael Kay. Thank you, Kenny. Kevin, if you look at it, you guys solved their pressure. Most of your points came off transition, so that's pretty much the way you drew it up, right? Well, we had to. You know, they, they put you in that position. Uh, you don't want to walk it up against them. You want to do the best you can to attack. And uh, I thought our guys did a real good job. And also, I thought we scored off our defense quite a bit, which is something we haven't done in a while. Tough to motivate when your team loses a game like last night. Well, you know, you know, no kidding. I mean, it was a real tough loss for us. You know, we thought we had that one under control, and bang, bang, all of a sudden it's over. So, but I like the character of our team, and sometimes that's good. A young team, they're kind of fearless. They just want to go play again, and I, I think that's the way we feel today. Kevin, thanks a lot. Okay, thanks, Mike. That's Kevin Bannon. Let's go back to Kenny Albert. Thanks very much, Mike. A 42-33 halftime lead for the Rutgers. Scarlet Knights will return in a moment. It's halftime at the Kodak ECAC Holiday Festival presented by Foot Locker. And the score, Rutgers 42, Siena 33. Hi, everybody. Michael Kay here on the floor of Madison Square Garden. And the Rutgers-Siena game, well, the experts probably thought that that was going to be the championship game of this holiday festival. That's not the way it turned out because there were two upsets yesterday. And it turns out it's going to be Fordham against Hofstra in the championship game. So why don't we set you up and tell you exactly how that came about. Keep it! Keep it! 
Rutgers' plan was to jump out early. Well, Speedy Claxton said, mm, bad plan. That drive there made it 27-16 Hofstra. He was too quick for Rutgers' guards. And there, the layup made it 31-23 Flying Dutchman. But he wasn't that great with the pass. There it was intercepted. Up ahead to Dante Jones, who slams it home off the Hofstra turnover. Jones again goes the length of the court. This fast break dunk made it 34-33. Rutgers trailing by one, and Kevin Bannon was feeling pretty good about things. But in the second half, it was all Hofstra and all Norman Richardson from three-point range off the Claxton pass right there. He was outstanding, and he was on fire. Another three, and that tied the game at 56. And Claxton was totally unselfish. When it looked like he was going to drive, he decided to dish off. And Richardson was a recipient. The J right there made it 58-56. Rutgers still leading. But Richardson, again, all him, all Richardson, all three, 61-56. And he had a lot of reason to celebrate at the end. And he talked later about his hot streak. Well, I always think um, my shot's going down when I let it go. That's a beautiful <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I never feel like I'm going to miss, um, not to sound cocky or nothing, but I never feel like I'm going to miss when I shoot. So everyone that I um, shot in the whole entire game, I felt was going in. I knew Norm was high, so that's all I was doing. I was just trying to concentrate on getting in the lane. If they came and helped, I was just dishing to them. If they didn't, I was just scoring. But um, they kept coming and leaving him, and I kept finding them. You know, I'm all excited about this win. I'm all for they, these two are fine. They're like, they just expect it. And that, that's what I just love about these New York guys we have. They just expect, they just expect to win. Realistically, no one expected Fordham to win in the second game. Siena was just too tough. Jim Cantonessa buries the three early, puts Siena up 30 to 26. But Fordham would not give up. Freeman McCamey right here with a banker that scored, making it 47-43, Fordham at the half. A little bit of a surprise in the second half. Cantonessa again with a three, and that puts Siena up 52-50 and a 9-0 run. Bob Hill was a little bit concerned, but his team responded, especially the backcourt. Bavon Robin with a three, and he was burying them all night. And his backcourt mate also joined in after Robin buried another one. Jason Harris said, let me have some. And that's exactly what happened. He buries a three from the right side. That made it 81-77 for him. Harris wasn't done. Harmatek dribbles to the right side. And they pass the ball around the horn. And Harris buries another three. 28 points for him. And eight points in a minute 41 span. And Robin wouldn't give up. Robin drives the lane as they were looking for the three. And Fordham pulls off an upset. And Robin playing, that was an upset as well because he had bad ribs, but he wanted to go. When I first met Coach, you know, he, he asked me a question. He said, you know, can you play with pain? And, and uh, that's something I always remember. And, you know, the last couple of days, that's all I've been thinking about. And, you know, you know, I have to help the team as best as I can. And, you know, I think my teammates did a great job in understanding um, that, you know, that I, um, I came out ahead, you know, my first two shots, and, and you know, they just did a great job of getting me the ball. And, you know, it's one of those days you never know when you're going to be hot. It's great to come back here. Um, first and foremost, because the people have always been so great, and uh, second, just the aura of the building. And and I didn't know what, what end, what bench we'd be on. You know, I'd been at the other end for a few years, but I hadn't been back at that end, so it was, it was kind of neat again. It's Fordham and Hofstra in the championship game, but before that, the second half of the consolation game. Rutgers leads 42-33 over Siena. Another half to come. But when we come back, Bill Daughtry at the sports desk. Lucas is the talk of the town after last night's 38-31 shootout down in Miami. The Jet quarterback with three touchdown passes in the win, and yes, the tuna loves it. Here's the thing I like about Ray last night. He went through a cold, you know, he was okay early, and then he went through a little cold spell. And he was cold. And the whole offense was cold. We weren't playing much, and, you know, we're kind of out of rhythm. And then he kind of got it back. I think the best play he made in the game was that scramble where he took a sack instead of throwing the ball. I don't know, right near the end, you remember that one? That might have been the best judgment he exercised in the game. Ray, uh, Bill again was noticing how your play has improved, and I think you've made the coach a pretty 
big believer in you now. Well, it took a lot of confidence for you to put me out there, especially after that interception down there. When was that? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, you know, he stuck with me, and uh, we're just progressing together. You know, with the offense and everything, he's taking the chains off more and more each week. And if we hit those big plays like that, you know, that's the difference in the game, the big plays. That was a shootout, and we just came out on top. One guy. Halftime of the consolation game, Sienna is trailing. Sienna coach Paul Hewitt and, and Paul, they seem to be breaking the press, getting a lot of transition baskets. What do you tell your team at half? But I think more our transition defense off of missed shots. Uh, we, our point guards penetrating or maybe take some shots below the foul line. Our other wing guys aren't rotating back. So we got to do a better job of having a two and a three man rotate back when our point guard does get below the foul line. And we just got to stay at it. Hopefully we'll just chip away in this half. Paul, oh, thanks a lot. Okay. That's Paul Hewitt. Now let's go back to Kenny Albert and Bucky Waters. Thanks very much, Mike. Uh, Rutgers, Bucky led by as many as 13. They lead by nine at the half. Well, yeah, Kevin Bannon said he had to play more people. He went into his bench deeper and quicker, but two guys played the entire first half, Todd Billett and Dante Jones, and they played all 20 minutes, and they performed extremely well. The ease with which Rutgers was able to get into transition, Mr. Energy, Joel Salvi pushing it up, Dante Jones with a drill. Here again, Salvi coming from the weak side, creates a loose ball, and the big fella. Rashad Kent up the floor, Dante Jones again with a drill. This time, Todd Billett beats pressure. Again, the little guy went 20 minutes, had five assists, 10 points, gets down in there deep, but this time it pays off. Guess who's on the receiver? More free throws than Sienna. Key getting to the line for Rutgers with their physical strength, very impressive. The fact that this game is as low scoring as it is has got to prompt Paul Hewitt to increase the pressure and whether Rutgers can handle the press as well as they did in the first half against the green wave and the deep bench of Siena is the question. Dante Jones, 7 of 13 from the field, 17 points. Todd Bennett with 10, including those two three-point field goals early on. Five assists, only three turnovers for the little guy. Canta Mesa leading the way for Siena with 10. Faison held to six. He scored only 11 last night. Second half for Rutgers. Greer, Kent, Denise, Billet, and Jones. Here's Kent underneath, and he gets the roll. Just, just the way the game started. Rutgers in the half court trying to establish Rashad Kent down low. For Sienna Stewart, Kent Mesa, Faison, Osinski, and Dieters. They're starting five. Dieters. From the outside, no good. Kent looking for the lead pass to Jones. It was picked off. Here's Kent to Mesa. His foot was on the line. A two-point attempt. Faison rejected, but goaltending is the call. A good start. Very important for the Saints. They uh, looked very disgruntled, out of sync, completely out of their tempo in the first half. They need to get going early. Denise underneath for Rashad Kent. Rutgers clearly in an attack mode versus the pressure in the half court. A good sign. Kent 5 of 5 from the floor. He takes what you call high percentage shots. Yes, he does. <laughs> Can't get much uh, higher percentage than that. Throwing it down is only tough on the twine. Jones and Kent Mason. Hit the floor. Here's Greer on the feed from Billet. Quiet first half for Jeff Greer, but his teammates have gotten the job done. Greer with only four. He's Rutgers' second leading scorer. And the Scarlet Knights have matched their biggest lead. The half-court defense, very impressive by the Knights. Sienna so far just unable to establish their texture of press and run and opening the floor. Rutgers has managed to keep it in a half-court battle, and therein lies the 13-point lead. The good news for Siena, even though they're down 13, there's lots of time, and they can put points on the board in a hurry. 18 minutes and change, lots of time for that explosive offense. And you saw Kevin Bannon. He is looking for his first holiday festival victory. He's 0-3, came in with Ryder in 1995, who do you have to face? Kentucky and St. John's. Greer and the foul. Dieters commits the personal. 
And Greer will try and complete the three-point play. That's why those kids went to Ryder, to play those guys, right? That's right. <laughs> Good block from behind by Faison. But it's been Rutgers getting every break and every loose ball so far tonight. Look at that. Great recovery. Jeff Greer, extremely athletic, has been quiet tonight. Greer chasing down. Rutgers with a 15-point lead in the third-place game here at the Kodak ECAC Holiday Festival. Hofstra and Fordham coming up next here on MSG. Dante Jones. Greer driving now, throws it back out. And the Scarlet Knights on the recovery. Billet for Jones. It's good. And another Seattle foul. The Scarlet Knights just quicker to the ball. Every loose ball, everything off the glass. They're just, uh, they're out hustling Santa. Pure and simple. There it is again. Bill at this time doesn't go deep, which I like. And hits the open man while he's got a good passing lane before he gets covered up. He was able to do that in high school, Kenny, with his size. Able to get down in there and uh, not overpower, but at least uh, not get overpowered. He's going to find at this level in starting conference play, the uh, first of the year. He better pick it up. Taylor, it's good. And he was fouled by Tanis. Court offense the other way. Denise from the back. Taylor, another one of those tall, quick, big guys off the Siena bench. Rutgers has outscored Siena 11-4 to start the second half. Taylor, the sophomore out of Boston. Thayer Academy, same high school as Jeremy Roenick of the Phoenix Coyotes, who you will see tonight if you keep the dial tuned to MSG as the Coyotes take on the Rangers. Boy, there's a, there's a, lot, a lot of information there. And Taylor completed the three-point play. Rutgers by 15, 53-38. Put a little too much on it. Jones could not hit on the follow. Face it. Thought about shooting the three. Instead, pulls it back out. Rutgers, terrific job getting back in transition defense. Again, taking away the advantage, taking away transition, forcing Siena into a half-court game. Stewart from three. Well short. Rebounded by Salvi. And the Rutgers fans here in the crowd, Bucky, chanting air ball following the miss. Bill it for three. Todd Billet has bounced back following the tough time he had against Hofstra last night. Yeah, it, in in back-to-back -back games that way, youth is wonderful. Uh, <laughs> it just, uh, you know, they've got the energy especially with young teams, as Kevin Bannon has pointed out, you know, we, we tend to unravel when things go badly for us in one of those valleys. Uh, we, just, we just continue to make mistakes. But as Rutgers is showing right here, they can play on a very high level. The problem is they have not been able to sustain it. Scarlet Knights, seven and four. They begin conference play next week. Nice move to the basket by Michael Berman. Good job by Berman to come to the ball against that trap. The occasional traps that uh, Rutgers has applied in the half court has seems to keep Siena on their heels. They're really not attacking as, uh, as well as they have earlier this season. 4.15 gone by, second half. Glad you've joined us on MSG. Kenny Albert with Bucky Waters and Michael Kay, Rutgers and Siena. Playing for third place in the Kodak ECAC Holiday Festival. Joel Salvi can't be more open in the middle. Three on the shot clock. Jones. And a new 35 for the Scarlet Knights. Defense! 
Rutgers just probing. Nice job. Siena likes to play defense very hard for six or seven seconds, strip, rebound, and run. And they have just totally been put in a Lawrence Welk tempo, and they're not comfortable at all. Jeff Greer hitting on the three from the corner. Rutgers five of seven from three-point land. Oof. But the big thing tonight is they've handled the press. They've handled pressure. And for those that saw that uh, game with Florida, you know that has been a problem. In the Jimmy V Classic, last Tuesday night at the Meadowlands, the 20-point loss, the worst loss since Kevin Bannon took over the program three seasons ago. Greer from three on the other side. Bounces right into the hands of Dante Jones. Good work on the offensive boards here in the second half by Rutgers. As the Scarlet Knights turn it over, a timeout with 14-10 remaining. Second half, Rutgers leading Seattle by 17 points. He is uh, relentless. I mean, uh, you know, he'll go anywhere and most any lengths to get a story. Everywhere I go, I see this guy. He's like a private investigator. We, we find we have to protect the athletes from Fooch. They know that he's going to ask the, the tough question. They know that he's not going to back down. They know that he's not going to take no for an answer. Fooch is calling collect. Would you accept the call? Yeah, I'll accept. Baby! Did you get Ewing? No, he wouldn't talk. Uh, more angles, more insight. MSG, it's more than just a game. Back at Madison Square Garden, 14-10 to go, second half. Rutgers leading Siena 59-42 as Jay Wright, head coach of the Hofstra Flying Dutchman, awaits the championship game. Hofstra looking to become only the fourth school to repeat. But uh, Bob Hill would not like to see that happen, the head coach of the Fordham Rams. What a story. Both uh, coaches, uh, Bob Hill coming back his first year back in New York. If you were able to win this tournament, and of course... Uh, for Coach Wright trying to make this the Hofstra Invitational with back-to-back -back championships. So, nice storyline to the championship game. Both teams won hard-fought games last night to get there. Duquesne, Providence, and St. John's, the only schools who have won back-to-back -back holiday festivals. Dante Jones called for the foul. His second personal. Norman Richardson, the MVP of last year's tournament, scored 23 points last night for Hofstra. Only four players have won two MVP awards. As Prosper Karangwa misses the free throw, Tom Gola, Jimmy Walker, David Russell, and Chris Mullen have won two holiday festival most valuable player awards. Richardson with another strong game tonight. Could become the fifth. He was our Kodak player of the game last night, but he had a lot of help. Karangwa misses both free throws. Not much going right tonight for Siena. It will be a long three-hour bus trip back to the Albany area for the Saints. Unless they can somehow come back from a 17-point deficit. Well, they are a team that, if they get it going, can score them in bunches. Arch ball bottled up, and Seattle will retain possession. Seattle really, really stressed now. Uh, they've been so comfortable in their transition game, but now those opportunities are coming so sparingly that they're overreacting. Arch ball there just clearly taking it into uh, a pack of black jerseys. There was no place to go. Rashad Kent sits down. Kareem Wright checks back into the game for the Scarlet Knights. Jones got a hand on it. Dante Jones with 20 points tonight. Leading the way for Rutgers. Three Scarlet Knights in double figures. And a timeout. 30-second timeout called by Siena. Head coach Paul Hewitt out of Westbury, Long Island. Westbury High School spent five years as an assistant coach at Villanova. Also a, a former assistant at Fordham, USC, and CW Post. And, and despite 
the showing here in the Holiday Festival. What a job Paul has done in his three years at Siena. Indeed he has, and uh, it looks like the beat's going to go on. It's interesting, you know, we mentioned this briefly last night, but wherever he served as a college assistant, the, the modus operandi was not the style of play that the Saints are employing, that we're not pressing on. Villanova, Fordham, all were more half-court pattern type uh, situations as one year with George Raveling at Southern Cal. And again, not a fast-breaking mentality, but he picked that up in high school, and uh, it's been good to him, and it's easy to recruit to. It's the way kids want to play now, so he's going to be around. One of the great ironies of this uh, first half, points off of turnovers, where Siena lives only eight and Rutgers 18. That's an amazing stat. And what that means is Rutgers handled pressure, got shots on the board, and their inside strength bailed them out. Rutgers shooting 50%. You mentioned recruiting. Hewitt was heavily involved as Karangwa could not hit the three. Taylor on the rebound for Karangwa. Hewitt heavily involved in the recruitment of Tim Thomas while an assistant coach of Villanova. And he also helped convince Terry Kittles to stay after Steve Lapis took over the Wildcats. I'd say uh, those two in your resume demonstrate recruiting ability. Yes, right. Met by Taylor. That's 286 pounds fall to the floor. The third personal committed by Taylor. Just right feeding right under the basket. And a tight end mentality. <laughs> Kareem Wright, when he catches it at 6'9", 285, he makes a left on Route 95 and goes home. A sharp left. Don't get in front of him. 0 for 4 from the free throw line. Three substitutions for Siena. Osinski, Knapp, and Faison back into the game. I would imagine in Big East play that uh, there will be times when Rashad Kent and Kareem Wright may be on the floor at the same time. I hope the building is well structured. Earthquake resistant. <laughs> Wright is amazingly agile. I really like his quick feet. He's now 0 for 5 from the foul line. Well, we didn't talk about his hands, but he's, he's very quick for his size. Berman! And, and a bit vulnerable to the drive. <laughs> Michael Berman with his second field goal. Rutgers by 15, 12 and a half to play. If you were still coaching Bucky, you would love to have a guy like Joel Salvi on your team. Yeah, yeah. He's instant energy off that bench. When you make a substitution, you, something has to happen. You just don't make them to make them. You're, you're trying to strengthen something. And while his stats belie his value, he just picks up the tempo of things with that energy that he gives. 22 points for Dante Jones, who has led Rutgers in scoring in nine of their first 11 games. They're going to get tonight. This is a team in process. Osinski. And Billet was held by Scott Knapp, who commits his second personal foul. A timeout with just under 12 minutes to play. All Rutgers, they lead by 17. Rutgers leads Siena 61-44 in the third place game in the Holiday Festival, 11:48 remaining. And one of Rutgers' assistant coaches has a great basketball pedigree, Danny Hurley. He played four years at Seton Hall, and then he started to coach with his dad at St. Anthony's, Bobby Hurley Sr. Now, his brother, Bobby Hurley Jr., had that terrible car accident in Sacramento, and he was ready to play in Europe this year, and then suffered a complete tear of the knee, the medial collateral ligament, and also the back ligament as well. So they're a little unsure whether he's going to come back to make matters worse for the family. Well, Danny Hurley's house burned down about a month ago, but everybody's fine, and it's been a little bit of an unlucky stretch for the family. Back to you guys. Thanks, Mike. Kareem Wright stripped from behind by Clinton. You had a look at Danny Hurley on the Rutgers bench getting started early. He had a great stroke. I'll tell you one thing about the Hurley family, though. They're strong, they're competitive, and uh, it, it would take just, I can't imagine a set of circumstances 
that would take them out of being competitive and being able to come right back at you. Tough people, good people. And we will see Bobby Hurley Sr. and St. Anthony's here at the Garden on MSG on January 15th in the annual Super 6 high school tournament. Three games involving some of the top teams from the New York and New Jersey area. We mentioned Tim Thomas earlier. He played in the Super 6 as a high school senior. Elton Brand, a couple of years ago, took part. Dwayne Archbold of Siena played in the Super 6 tournament. Some of the great high school teams in the metropolitan area. And that will take place here at the Garden January 15th. You see, if they had invited the kids from Camden, I might have had a shot at it. But that was a few years ago. We can still figure out an invitation. This little spurt by Siena, uh, Rutgers has to be respectful here with 11 minutes and two seconds to go. Nothing is safe against a team like Siena if they can get into that score press. But they just can't, they just can't score. 11 yeah. minutes to play. Rutgers up by 17 points. Todd Billett also played in the Super 6 last year with Christian Brothers Academy. the turnover. Billet does it for the Scarlet Knights. Some sloppy play and Billet takes it all the way. Now the steal by Greer. Sienna going for the home run pass. At least they're playing Sienna ball. The problem is Rutgers is playing it much better. 30-second timeout <laughs> called by Kevin Bannon. Kevin Bannon said, hey, guys, uh, hey, 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 yeah. we're really doing well here on the half court. Let's don't lose it here and get in a silly track meet and give these guys some confidence back that they can get us an up-tempo. Let's button this thing down. The problem also for Rutgers at this point is that they can't get too conservative. Jeff Billett in the deep safety spot picks that one off. If he didn't get that one, it was three on O. Oh. Again, the little guy takes the ball down in there deep. There he is. Good instincts. Jason was ready to go and jam. Nice little stutter step. Little floater and finger roll. A runner up over the top. But I maintain he needs to pull up at that free throw line. He's got a good 15-foot jump shot where he can find those athletic wings coming to the basket. Once he gets down to the broken circle, close to the rim, it's a very difficult pass, and you've, you've really helped the defense, and you've lost your spacing. Magic Johnson, big guards can make that play, not the little people. Salvi breaks away from the double team, feeding Kent. Clinton strong on the boards. As we hit the midway point of the second half, Rutgers 65 and Siena 46. Salvi whistled on the reach in. I'm sensing, Kenny, a, a, a pickup in focus and intensity here, though, uh, by the Saints. They're, they're able now to get that ball down inside. Nothing's going right for them tonight, and they're still hanging around. And as we pointed out, with their style, they've just really got to, they've got to make some scores. They haven't been able to put pressure on, on Todd Billett because they haven't been able to set up a press. Faison from three, in and out, rebounded by Dante Jones, goes behind the back, around Faison, and takes it all the way. Ooh, Matador defense that time by Siena. Nobody even made an attempt to stop the dribble. From the corner, the three by Faison. Billet into the front court, pulls up from three. He's got it. Textbook. Well done. Billet's fourth three-point field goal of the game. You get the idea these last nine minutes will become a, a three-point shooting contest? Indeed, and they can fill them up. They were seven for 30 last night. They are not a great three-point shooting team, but they're good, and they can be streaky. So you had a five of 18 tonight from three. Rutgers, six of nine. Very impressive. They've been judicious. 
Rutgers has controlled the ball, controlled the tempo, and played very tough half court. The key always against Siena, you gotta handle pressure. Tonight, the Scarlet Knights have so far. Salvi, too far underneath. Good defense by Clinton. 18 point Rutgers lead. Faison was fouled by Rashad Kent. His third personal. One of the problems for Siena last night, which put him in this consolation bracket, they fouled excessively, which negated the tempo. It negated their depth. And uh, and tonight, now, if they can create fouls and stop uh, the action, they can get themselves back into this game. Billet with nine assists, season high, also 18 points. So the game plan to wear the little fella down really didn't materialize. Lewis Flores in the game for Rutgers replaces Jeff Greer, who scored nine of his 11 points in the second half. Flores out of Norman Thomas High School. He was the leading scorer in New York City high school ball last year, averaging 35 points per game. He had a little cameo three minutes in the first half and uh, six minutes last night. Kevin Bannon is hoping with his offensive ability that, uh, that he can give them that depth at point guard. Junior college player Renando Brown has uh, really not been much of a factor so far for the Scarlet Knights. Who lead by 16, 8-15 remaining. Second half, Billet is four of five from three-point range tonight. Billet watched by the uh, six foot 10 Dieters. Now hits Jones on the far side. Billet. Jones from three. That would have tied Jones' career high. Clinton. And the foul is called on Jones, and that is his fourth personal foul. There haven't been many of those, but boy, the Siena kids' eyes get big when they can get out in transition. Just four guys, man. Finishing against a Big East team a little bit tougher than they're used to. James Clinton, sophomore out of Pleasantville, New Jersey. You know, from that, uh, from that point in the first half with about eight minutes and 20 seconds to go, Hansa Mesa had that technical foul, and at that point it was, uh, it was uh, a one-point game. It went to six, then it went to ten. So as we look back on that, uh, on that happening, uh, for whatever reason, it did not inspire Siena, and it gave, uh, it seemed to take some of the starch out of them. Many times that technical foul will light them up a little bit. Coach Paul Hewitt was also called for a tee. The technicals came right after the score was tied for the last time at 20, and then Rutgers won in that spurt. They've outscored Siena 50 to 34 since. Cantamesa picks up number three. So much for the expression that technicals are timed intimidation. Tonight it didn't work. Rutgers wouldn't have it. Hofstra and Fordham coming up next for the championship of the Kodak ECAC Holiday Festival. Rashad Kent, who missed all three games Rutgers played here at Madison Square Garden last year with various injuries. 13 to go along with seven rebounds last night has 11 points tonight boy looking at that body yeah it's it just doesn't seem like it's possible he could get injured not only is he all muscle he's probably got the body fat of lettuce <laughs> and this guy is hard with or without the croutons <laughs> push it Transition defense, excellent by the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers by 16, Stewart driving. Dieters could not connect on the follow. Billet. Billet around Archbold, bounce pass, he saw Kent, but two Seattle players were in between, and a timeout with 7.02 remaining. All Scarlet Knights. So far, all Rutgers in Madison Square Garden. Part of the reason, excellent three-point shooting. Rutgers, the number one team in the Big East from the three-point start. 
gets a pull up from Tom Billet, who's having a sensational night. Four for five from three, five for eight overall, four for four from the foul line. The steal by Faison, and he takes it all the way for the hoop. See it? Oh, yeah. Not a bit of a run, 7-0. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Just a little under seven minutes. It's doable. Flores from three. So you got a trail by 21 moments ago. Now a 14-point deficit. I think Kevin Bannon would like to have seen a couple of passes before that long three. The inside-out three. Taking that easy way out with the jump shot with this lead and not running the clock. Not smart. Cantamesha goes to the right hand to lay it in. Now we're talking about six minutes in a 12-point game. Rutgers, Kevin Bannon sensing the Siena comeback. Calls timeout. 6-10 to go. It's a game. Only 12. It, it, it was a good timeout. Uh, again, with the sustained run, and we talked about Siena as a team of streaks, and once they score and can set up their pressure, then is when they can double team and get that transition game going. Great move to the hoop. Not really quick. Canna Mesa just knifing in there, going by Joel Salve, and that's a day's work in itself. Normally, he takes a piece out of you. Did you just see that look in uh, Sienna's eyes now that they know they can score points in a hurry. And they've got ample time. They should not panic now. A 9-0 run over the last three minutes. The Saints really have to be confident that they've got lots of time to do it. They've been frustrated now for three halves. And uh, they've got time to make amends. Fill it quickly across. Now slows things down. Six minutes to play. Rutgers by 12. They led by 21. Three and a half minutes ago. Man for man pressure is not going to bother Todd Billett. What bothers him is the traps with the tall wings that Sienna can present. Five on the shot clock. Billett off balance. No good, but he draws the foul on Osinski, his second. And a much better job that time of using clock. Villa took the shot clock all the way down to three. Rutgers only 50% tonight, 12 of 24 from the free throw line. But Billet has hit all four of his attempts all on technical <laughs> free throws. He hit all four. He just doesn't like a crowd up there on the line. Didn't bother him this time. Having... Uh, Having your best ball handler, the guy that's uh, going to have it if you got the lead, and his ability to hit free throws is just a tremendous value. For Rutgers, it's the big men that get him behind with their failure to convert free throws. His brother Jeff, one of the stars for Rutgers during their Big East tournament run last year here at the Garden. Strong game tonight for Todd. And Sienna has a chance for the three-point play. Dwayne Archbold drew the foul, number five, on Dante Jones. So Jones fouls out with 534 remaining. Lots of life left in the Saints. Good drive to the hoop. Weak side defense coming a little late. Archbold, a very tough kid. Good penetrator. Dante Jones fouls out with 24 points, seven rebounds. Good preparation getting ready for Big East play. The guy who has carried him tonight is not going to be there for the last five minutes and 34 seconds. And this young team needs really more than a blowout win. They need to have Siena come back, really stress them and be able to hang on. Archbold completes the three-point play. Stewart made contact with Greer. That's number four on Stewart. We always have to keep in mind the problem that Rutgers has had at the foul line, and one of the best ways to get back in a game is when your opponent is benevolent coming down the stretch. That was what's so impressive last night, Kenny, with Fordham. 
They were just, they just wouldn't yield coming down. Just perfect down the stretch at the line. Greer could not hit. He's 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Sienna fighting back from a 21 point deficit. They trail by only 11. 5.20 to play. Face it into the corner for Osinski. Saints working around. This is Archbold. And he drew the foul on the outside on Thompson. His third. Sienna really attacking the basket with dribble penetration, drawing fouls, stopping the clock, as I mentioned earlier. Attacking the basket with dribble penetration, drawing fouls, stopping the clock, as I mentioned earlier, when they had the lead last night. Uh, they foolishly made fouls which stopped the clock and allowed their momentum to go down and their opponent to get back in it. Tonight it's working for them. Luis Flores after that uh, quick jump shot again got the hook. Last night it was uh, two quick turnovers so while well, Kevin Bannon is uh, trying to bring along his backcourt with some experience there's not the trust level there yet. Todd Billett they're going to have to cut the sneakers off of them out there. Archbald hits one of two, cutting the Rutgers lead to ten. Boy, and they're not looking good against this pressure either. That inbounds pass is only about six feet. Billet. There's the double team. Had it stripped. Here comes Archbald, and he was fouled by Thompson. Paul Hewitt wants an intentional foul. He's not going to get it. But Todd Billett has no, no problem with one-on-one -on -one pressure. But here are the big wings of Siena, those hands up, creating a deflection. And that's what they do best. Saints are running. Dwayne Archibald again attacking the basket, came into this tournament, shooting 86% from the foul line. No question. They're going to drive the ball to the hoop. Archibald has been a factor off the bench. They have 10 points, won a PSAL title here at the Garden as a junior at Paul Robeson. He leads the team in steals, very assertive, very aggressive. <laughs> this is both free throws. Painful, painful for the Saints. Could have pulled Sienna within eight. Greer missing on the three. Chased down by Salvi. Rutgers with a new 35. Again, the quick shot by Rutgers. Not what Kevin Bannon wants. Defense! 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 Again, that fine line. You can get too conservative, but a quick long J. Not the smart play. Bill it from three. In and out. Rebounded by Thompson. Puts it right back up and hits. Ideal. Milked it down inside. Ten. Billet had a great look. Soft rebound. Thompson very assertive on that offensive board. Did not get to play at all last night. Rutgers Bench showing much better than expected. Jim Cantonation back in the game for Siena along with Scott Knapp. Down to 4 one remaining. Rutgers leading by 12 points. Billet rims out. Thompson strong. Good move. Didn't put it on the floor. Went right back up. Very experienced player after that Mormon mission and the transfer. He's added a few years experience. <laughs> Berman not ready for the pass from Knapp. 3.45 to go. Knapp, double team, throws it back out. Now into the corner for Canta Mesa. Salvi. Rutgers ball. And a timeout. 3.29 to play. Siena. On the comeback trail, still down by a dozen.
Back at the Garden, 329 remaining. Rutgers leading by 12 points. Thursday night on MSG, the Knicks head down to the nation's capital as they take on the Washington Wizards. It all gets started with MCS Cannon Knicks game night at 6.30. The Knicks and the Wizards from the MCI Center in Washington. This one's still alive, Kenneth Milad. Dead ball press. Boy, for a couple of exchanges there, Rutgers was running to the baseline. The inbounds pass only about six feet long, which really sets up the defense for traps and uh, makes, makes escape very difficult. Dillard Funky has gone the distance tonight. Yes, he has. But here comes that tall trap that gives him problems. 39 minutes last night. He's like that, uh, that, that bunny boy. He never quits. Just call him the energizer. They need a trap. Sienna needs a trap on him. That's a mismatch there. Shot blocked by Faison, but the foul is called. So Billet will head back to the free throw line. Billet making dribble penetration. Clinton at 6'8", 6'10", just too big to handle him on the perimeter. I didn't see the foul. Foul was called on Clinton, who was behind Billet, not facing, who yeah. came over and blocked the shot. And Billet is now 7-7 seven of seven from the foul line. His teammates are 9 of 22. One, guys. Rutgers by 13, three minutes to go. Half court man for man by the Scarlet Knights. It's been good all night. Nap from three. Kept alive by Cantabesa. Sienna right now spending all her energy on getting a three. They need to score quickly and set up their press. Doesn't Osinski. have to be a three. Osinski could not hit. Kent for Greer. Back to Kent. Big fella down the middle. Rashad Kent running the floor well and being rewarded. Back at a rim. He rebounds. Two nice power dribbles. Kicks it out. Keeps trucking. And Jeff Greer gives it back to him. Nice work. Now, last night, seven for eight. But free throws, still an adventure with Kent. Tonight, two of five. When Archbold instant offense off the bench, replaces Corey Osinski. Made free throws, giving Rutgers a little breathing room at 2.25 to go on a 14-point pad. 15. Hofstra Fordham coming up for the championship. Archbold from three. Strong rebound. And Kent was fouled by Berman. Sienna been coming hard to that offensive board all night. It was expensive in the first half. They got out of sync and yielded lots of transition baskets. They were just unable to get back uh, when the shot went up and it, it afforded Rutgers a chance to get a nice pad. But I like the way Sienna comes to that board. They just have to remember to double back and give a little defensive coverage. Kevin Bannon, a relief man tonight. He 0-2 uh, in this tournament would have been very difficult uh, to live with with a Big East team in here, but his kids have responded well. They blew the game open midway through the first half after the score was tied at 20. Rutgers went on a 17-4 run. One. Sienna has battled back here in the second, but the deficit was too large. They trailed by as many as 21 points. Boy, yeah. we got to take back everything we said about his free throws. Nice looking stroke. 7-0 run by Rutgers. 
face in from three. It's good. And the foul committed.